He chooses his innocent victim. This time, he will not fail. This time, he is sure. So I grew up in the era of stranger danger. So it was really the media that taught me more about strangers. Dangerous people, you know, stranger danger. If somebody tries to engage with you, run away. It's always like a van. A white a, van, a dude yeah, in a van. with no windows. You know, don't ever get into a car. He's going to promise right. you a puppy and some candy. Yeah. Don't fall for it. Yeah. We were told not to hitchhike because we would be kidnapped. So in 1997... Uh, we had a guy come from Brentwood, Tennessee, drive up here to Naperville, uh, met a 13-year-old corner of her block, took her to a hotel, raped her, let her go back home, and she told her parents that she met him on this thing called America Online. Call now for America Online, a new way to use your computer to communicate. My Instagram's kind of like a mix. Like, I would say half the people I know and half the people... I don't know, or like friends of friends. Three fourths of it is probably my friends from like school or acquaintances I know, not just random people off the internet. But there is, a, of course, that one fourth that is random people I've never talked to or don't know looking at pictures of me. When it comes to Tumblr, a lot of people like follow me for my stuff, and that's cool. I like to have them follow me, but also there's sometimes people that I don't know but follow me. I friend a lot of people. I would just join he games. He just friends random people. I, I would just yeah. join games for no reason and just go at friend, at friend. Braxton does end up, you know, I'll be in there and he's on the headphones playing Xbox and I'm like, who are you playing with? And he'll be like, I don't know, some kid. Have you ever gotten creepy DMs from yes. guys? Yeah, all the time. Have you been solicited by any creeps online? Like, yes. have you? Yeah. He was contacted by a stranger on Instagram. Oh, like I saw your page and like I'm really like, oh, sure I'm interested in like money. sending you money for like sure in exchange does. for pictures. I had people like DM me saying that I'm like, I'm so beautiful yeah. and like he'll buy me whatever I want. So we at Bark unfortunately detect issues around online child predation very frequently. Last year alone, we escalated 450 online child predators to law enforcement. And so we, we know that it's a common problem. Uh, unfortunately, we think most parents underestimate the, the, the commonality of that problem. We decided to go undercover as multiple children on social media and post innocuous content to see what would happen. We had to be very intentional with everything we did. We had to create personas. They had to have believable date of births, and we had to know everything about the city that they lived in, and we had to create storylines, and we worked closely with law enforcement. And basically just pushed, pushed go. We put, the, we put everything live, and, and we documented what happened. Within the first hour of posting on Libby's accounts, seven adult men contacted her. By the end of nine days, that number was 92. The conversations ranged in severity from making sexual comments to sharing and requesting explicit photos and videos to manipulation and threats. We had to deploy an entire team, you know, around the clock to responding because the, the rate at which these messages came in was mind-boggling. And of course, when you're dealing with social media and the internet, it's a global thing. It's not just an East Coast thing or a US-based thing. There were men that wanted to talk to children uh, for nefarious purposes at all hours of the day and night. We tried it with younger personas as well, even, even an 11-year-old. We launched our 11-year-old persona okay. online. It's 4.44 and go. Oh. One like from a guy whose profile photo <gasps> is a penis. One, one, so let's see. one minute and seven seconds. We have a message request. Although this, sorry, two more requests just came in. How much time? A minute, a minute. and 40 seconds? Yeah. How old, How old are, you? are you? You go to the profile, you know that that is a child. It also says in the profile that the child is in sixth grade. Another one. It's just lighting up, like the inbox is just boom, 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 boom. an incoming video call in less than five minutes. I can't see you. I'm going to be shot. 
Yeah, they all say don't be shy. This happens to all types of children. Um, this is not just kids who might be at risk. You know, oftentimes it's a child who's simply bored uh, in their bedroom at night. And I cannot tell you how many children I see in their bedrooms on live stream with tons of people just watching them, asking them to do certain things. You know, when parents allow their kids to have that device in their rooms at night, you know, where are your parents? These are the, then come the grooming question, where are your parents? Are you on an iPhone or are you on an iPad? What school are you? What are you wearing? Oh, your makeup looks so beautiful. It's not uncommon for grooming behavior to include showing um, minors images of pornography to help them to think that that is normal. And then that can be a progression in toward, towards um, engaging them in sexual activity. Do you want that? Do you want that as a parent, strangers in your child's room while you're sleeping? Would you leave the door open? with a sign that says my daughter's bedroom is the second one on the left, and then go to bed? We have traded a false sense of safety and security for actually putting our kids in riskier situations. There are some that are just there for a quick fix. Um, they want to see uh, something, uh, a body part or a live video, um, and then you might not hear from them again. But there are others, they use psychological strategies to methodically groom children by forming a friendship, by showing care. And then it escalates into more of a controlling relationship. What do predators do with the pictures and videos they get from kids? Um, they keep it, or they trade it. Last year alone, we received over 18 million reports of international and domestic online child sexual abuse. Between 2017 and 2018, video files reported to NCMEC increased 541%. We're seeing reports with graphic and violent sexual images of young children, including infants and reports of on-demand sexual abuse known as live streaming. Unfortunately, some of those were people who wanted to uh, actually meet the child in, in person, which could have been just because they wanted to have sex with, with a minor. Uh, and sometimes we uh, believe that it was because they might be part of a sex trafficking ring wanting to actually traffic the child. It was a tough decision, but if Keith wanted to meet Libby in person, we would let him. Oh, hi. hi. Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so I will be nervous. This is the first for everything. Yeah. Don't be. I'm not gonna rush you, we can just go upstairs and talk. Are you okay with me being 15? Um, I've never done it. Oh. It's okay. The project has also resulted in numerous arrests, and that's, that's great. Unfortunately, it's a drop in the bucket. The average internet predator has 250 victims in their lifetime. One person has that many victims in their lifetime if they're not caught. So what happens in the law enforcement arena that cops are not getting this technology training? The problem is so big. I mean, we would need to employ so many more officers um, trained in dealing with this issue. When you're a, a law enforcement professional and you're looking at more cases than you can ever possibly get to, unfortunately, a lot of those get triaged so low that they never actually get investigated. And so, unfortunately, that allows predators to keep doing exactly what they're doing without as much consequence. I think about how I would have felt as a young, impressionable child. I would have kept the abuses to myself for fear of being shamed and blamed. I would have suffered with it secretly and quietly. Uh, it's important really to never start that process because as a child, once you're in it, it's very hard to get out of it. Very hard to, to come forward and tell your parent, this is what's happening to me. So Do you think your that. parents know that this happens? Oh, no. No. I wouldn't be allowed to have a phone. Oh, if they knew what was going on, if they it would knew. be stripped. And so if you, as a parent or caregiver, can be an open, honest, soft place for your child to come and say, hey, look, everybody makes bad choices. I'm here for you and we'll, we'll get through this together. There, there's no bigger 
um, God's gift than a mother's intuition. When a mom knows something, feels something, there's something wrong with their kids. And, and God's given it, this to, to moms to protect their babies, whether the babies are six months old or 40, that never goes away. So I always tell moms to follow that and it'll never lead them astray. The best line of defense by far is, is to have active and engaged parents who understand what their child might be encountering online. Uh, children, unfortunately, left to deal with this all on their own. Um, and they're not, you know, we're talking about 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kids who are not equipped uh, to deal with this in a vacuum. And so it really takes that, that guardian and parent support system.